So you know how we've been telling you that Boeing got taken over by a Wall Street guy? So MacArthur Douglas. They, the, M- M- McDonnell Douglas. McDonald. They merged, and McDonnell Douglas is more of a cutthroat. They don't. They just care about quarterly profits. So Boeing went from being a company that cared about making quality airplanes. My grandpa their, worked. Their whole them. thing was Boeing's uh, uh, ethos was: if you make a quality airplane, the money will follow. And then they merged with McDonnell Douglas, and McDonnell Douglas is cut corners and make quarterly profits. So now they've been having a, a slew of problems uh, with the quality of those planes and every other day we're reporting something going wrong with a boeing airplane an engine catching on fire a door flying off uh, a wheel popping off uh oh, recently a, a plane just fell out of the sky uh p- people have already died from their remember that their, their supermax 737s so that's because they didn't want to do it correctly they wanted to cut corners so Jimmy, now wait, wait, wait. that thing you just said yeah we're, we're, you know Make a good plane and the, and money, the money will, will come. Fall. Right. And then the new place was like cut corners because we got to make our quarter. Right. The second one is what capitalism is. All these people think the first one is what. Ca- right. And that's what I thought. That's not what it is. Right. What it is is getting to the money and fuck you. That's right. All that matters is the money. And all these people haven't got through their head yet. Like, I'm not a communist. I don't like communism. Right. But capitalism is getting to the money and fuck the product. So that's why you have to have strong regulation. So here is this guy who's a whistleblower on Boeing, and he's been guy blowing the whistle, telling people how they're cutting corners and wrecking uh, so you won't be safe when you fly. 62-year-old Boeing whistleblower John Barnett was found dead in his truck after he didn't show up for a legal interview linked to the case against Boeing. Barnett worked for Boeing for 32 years and retired in 2017. After retiring, he spoke out about how Boeing was cutting corners on their airplanes. Just days before his death, Barnett gave evidence in a lawsuit against Boeing. Barnett accused Boeing of deliberately fitting substandard parts on their aircraft. He also accused Boeing of having faulty oxygen systems, saying one in four breathing masks would not work in an emergency situation. Barnett said a new plane builds were rushed. The new plane builds were rushed. When he brought his concerns forward, they were allegedly ignored by the company. When he died, Barnett was in Charleston for interviews linked to the case against Boeing. He was supposed to come back for more questioning on Saturday, but didn't show up. Inquiries were made to at his hotel where Barnett was found dead in his car in the parking lot. I guess he shot himself in the head twice. Police are investigating Barnett's death, but say he... he he died from a self-inflicted wound. I don't think he did. He was so depressed he didn't want to keep talking about Boeing. He didn't want to keep. Re- is that it? He wanted to die without really fucking them. But, right. That, Fuck you. The video below was a recent interview Barnett had with TMZ. Here's his interview. One, this is not a seven three seven problem. It's a Boeing problem. Um, and I know the FAA's gone in and they've done due diligence and inspections to assure that the door plugs of the seven three seven are are installed properly and the fasteners are torqued properly. But my concern is what's the rest of the airplane? What's the rest of the condition of the airplane? And the reason my concern for that is back in 2012, Boeing started removing inspection operations off their jobs. So it left the mechanics to buy off their own work. So what we're seeing with the door plug blowout is what I've seen with the rest of the airplane, as far as jobs not being completed properly, inspection steps being removed, um, Issues being ignored. My concerns are with the 737 and the 787 because those programs have really embraced the theory that quality is overhead and non value added. Um, so those two programs have really put a strong effort into removing quality from the process. When I first started working at Charleston, I was in charge with pushing back defects to our suppliers. And what that meant was I'd take a group of inspectors and actually go to the supplier and inspect their product before they sent it in. Well, I'd taken a team of four inspectors to Spirit Aerosystems to inspect the 41 section before they sent it to Charleston. And we found 300 defects. Some of them were significant that needed engineering um, intervention. Um, when I returned to Charleston, my senior manager told me that we had found too many defects and he was going to take the next trip. So the next trip he went on, he took two of my inspectors. And when they got back, they were given accolades for only finding 50 defects. So I pulled that inspector aside and I said, did Spirit really clean up their act that quick. That don't sound right. And she was mad. She said, no, said the two inspectors were given two hours to inspect the whole 41 section and they were kicked off the airplane. So this is, and 
So the FAA is supposed to be there doing their job, and it doesn't seem like they are. The whistleblower death compounds bad news for Boeing. The death of has renewed attention on the aerospace giant's long history of facing allegations from inside the company and from regulators of the kinds of quality control issues that came to light after a piece of an Alaskan airline jet fell off mid-flight in January. Almost a decade ago, the company entered into a wide-ranging settlement with the FAA, in part over potentially dangerous debris left on Boeing jets, such as metal shavings and tools. Fatal crashes in 2018 and 2019 triggered other whistleblowers to come forward to Congress to allege that relentless production schedules were causing safety and quality risks at Boeing plants. And the January 5th Alaska Airlines incident, which investigators said was caused by faulty installation of a door plug, has prompted a Justice Department investigation as well as fresh concerns from the FAA, which gave the company 90 days to fix numerous quality control issues discovered during an audit. Boeing weathered a deep so now uh, there's a lot of people I saw <laughs> I saw Dave Rubin on Joe Rogan say you don't need regulators everybody has a cell phone now they can take a picture of it oh yeah remember the market the, will fix it after the, I the crash and die the market people will go, fix hey, it hey that's not we'll do it with form it too yeah. you don't need regulation yeah. you just people will learn from when they get poisoned what their bad drug is but the drumbeat of bad news. so Boeing weathered a deep crisis after the crashes which killed 346 people. But the drumbeat of bad news since then, which spiked with the... Can you get rid of Kurt's thing? No? But the drumbeat of bad news since then, which spiked with the January blowout, has significantly undermined the reputation of the aviation giant, one of only two major manufacturers of airliners in the world. And a vir So it's Boeing and Airbus. Mm -hmm. So if you can fly in an Airbus plane, you should fly in an Airbus plane. I'm going to go... Now, I've made flights... I have to fly. I fly American. That's mine. Uh, so I'm going to see if they have any Airbus going to Europe because I already booked it and it's a goddamn Boeing plane and I have to see if I can switch it. The fallout from the Alaska Airlines incident is now stretching into a third month with little prospect that they that the scrutiny from regulators, safety investigators and now federal prosecutors will let up soon. So now their stock price is supposed to go down. Is it not? There's, it's supposed to. I think it's gone down. Can you check, see if Boeing's stock price has gone down? Boeing said in an early Tuesday statement that it was taking action based on the FAA's audit findings and putting together a comprehensive action plan to strengthen safety and quality and build the confidence of our customers and their passengers. We are squarely focused on taking significant demonstrated action with transparency at every turn, the company said. Yeah, I bet. Investpedia said Boeing's stock tumble is just the latest example. And that was started in January 9th. And then as recent as February 13th, Boeing stock down. Boeing stock down. And that's Investors Business Daily that's saying that. Back to Jimmy. The underlying cause of problems on Boeing's production lines are not clear. I think it's clear. Huh. But anal analysts and some former employees point to pressure to meet delivery schedules and more recently workforce turnover during the coronavirus pandemic. Over the years, former company employees have come forward with concerns about what they viewed as sloppy work at Boeing plants. The Senate Commerce Committee documented many of those issues in a December 2021 report after the Supermax crash. Remember the Max, the 737 Max crashes? That was based on the accounts of seven whistleblowers. Seven whistleblowers. The whistleblowers included Ed Pearson, a former manager at the 737 factory, who alleged who alleged an unusual number of quality control problems at a plant under relentless schedule pressure. In the wake of Alaska incident, even minor incidents involving Boeing planes have drawn outsized attention. What are what are the minor This article never mentions what the minor incidents are. What, a wobbly wheel on a drink cart? <laughs> or maybe malfunctioning restroom paper towel dispenser? Or how about a wing falling off mid-flight? Is that would be a minor incident? What do you mean minor? So too did the death of John Barnett, the former employee who was discovered March 9th with what appeared to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. You goddamn know that's not what happened now, to him. Now, Jimmy, maybe it's good that he died because, I don't know if you know, but Boeing... 
uh, is in charge of rushing smart bombs to Israel and the IDF and rushing weapons to Israel. Oh, really? In fact, they've been having a lot of protests. Somebody just got arrested for blocking the entrance to Boeing. Oh, so really? If this guy, you know, if these say, uh, now I'm just speculating here, but. If these safety concerns are made a big deal of now, it's not a good time. Israel's in a fight for its life. And I would say Israel, especially the Mossad or CIA, anyone, is well within their rights to do whatever they got to to make sure Israel's okay. Because we got to get those weapons through Boeing to Israel. So, How much you want to bet that's connected? I bet you. So this, I bet you. Yeah. I How bet much you, you want to bet? I bet you it is. Because somebody got shot in the head yeah. for revealing that Boeing sucks. Yeah. Why would that even happen? Oh, because they're really important. Uh, and really, who, who else gets shot in the head, mysteriously dies? Epstein? That's right. Yeah. So, at, so get this. At some point after transferring from Washington to Boeing 787 plant in South Carolina in 2010, Barnett, the guy who they say just shot himself in the head, Barnett, 62, he filed a complaint with the FAA about metal shavings being left inside 787 jets during manufacturing, where they could sever electrical wiring. In 2017, the agency issued a directive requiring that those shavings be cleared out before the jets could be delivered to customers. The FAA said Tuesday that the agency could not provide additional details without a Freedom of Information Act request. Yeah, so that's go. your FAA not working for you. Yeah. Robert M. Turkowitz, one of Barnett's lawyers, said the former Boeing quality manager who joined the company in 1985 was a decent was as decent a person as you can imagine. He had high integrity, he was honest, and he was as dedicated to making air travel safe. Barnett retired from Boeing that year, a decade earlier than he had planned, fearing that if he didn't leave, he'd be fired. Mm -hmm. After leaving the company, Barnett also spoke out in public, sharing his concerns with the New York Times and taking part in a Netflix documentary on the Max crashes. In the film, Barnett, wearing a light blue shirt, described how for years he felt proud to work at Boeing, saying the company was like family and looked out for its employees. The company was responsive when employees identified in problems, Barnett said, but the culture began to shift. So every time I'd raise my hand and say, hey, we got a problem here, they would attack the messenger. Mm -hmm. in, in that complaint, Barnett alleged that, he, his, that the company punished him for raising concerns about production issues. Boeing denied that it retaliated against Barnett. Yeah, and I'm sure they didn't kill him. A uh, uh, 2022 order, however, denied the company. So, and that, and that sought to dismiss his claim. So Boeing filed the thing to dismiss his claim, but in 2022, uh, they denied the company's motion. When he failed to show up on Saturday at 10 a.m. for the final day of depositions in the case, and dinner, didn't answer his cell phone, Turkowitz said the hotel employees checked his room and then the hotel parking, finding his distinctive orange pickup truck was still parked there. We are shocked and devastated by what happened. As a lawyer, nothing prepares you for something like this. Keeping planes free of left-behind tools and parts has been an ongoing issue for the company and was part of the reason for a 2015 settlement between Boeing and the FAA. It involved the company paying $12 million in penalty and agreeing to make significant changes to its internal safety system and practices. How much you want to bet they didn't make any, even slight changes? The problem was not eliminated because in 2019, the Air Force paused deliveries of Boeing-made tankers over concerns about debris in the planes. In 2020, with Max Fleet still grounded after the crashes, Boeing disclosed that debris had been in the fuel tanks of undelivered jets. Mm -hmm. Two safety issues disclosed in recent days could point to other problems at the company, although both are in the early phases of being investigated. Last week, the National Transportation Safety Board issued a preliminary report into an incident in which the United Airlines 737 MAX experienced a stuck rudder pedal. Boeing said that the problem was addressed by replacing three parts and that the plane was put back into service. The company said it was not aware of the issue occurring in any other MAX and had seen only two other instances of an older generation of 737s that shares the same pedal system. And on Monday, 50 people were injured when a 787 operated by Chilean Airlines, LATAM, went into a sudden drop. Ugh. The company attributed the incident to a technical event, but the cause remains 
invest. Oh, good. So thanks for that explanation. We're all just glad it wasn't anything serious. It was just a technical event. What? A technical event. <laughs> That's great. RFK Jr. says, John Barnett worked for Boeing for 32 years. The company worked to destroy his life after he exposed safety concerns. I'm proud that my sister Rory worked to tell his story in an award-winning documentary called Downfall, the case against Boeing. Boeing killed 346 people out of greed. Let's hope there is a genuine investigation of John Barnett's suicide. He puts that in quotes. I like this. Mark Ames tweets out this picture. He says, Boeing said it was saddened to hear of Mr. Barnett's passing. Yeah. Well, We're remember very Harvey, saddened. Remember Harvey Weinstein hired that black cube X Mossad thing to go follow Rose McGowan around. Yeah. For his charges because he was connected. Yeah. Because he's rich. That's right. Well, Boeing, a valuable arms dealer to, to, Ukra uh, so, to, to Israel. Yeah. I bet Israel doesn't have to want the guy dead. I bet if you work at Boeing, you got those connections with, you know, these the most moral army in the world. I'm sure you could have a real Michael Clayton scene done if you want it. Yes. Yeah. I'll bet it's just like Michael Clayton. I'll bet it is. So the problem with capitalism is that even when you have regulatory bodies that are supposed to regulate them, the capitalists just buy the politicians that run those regulatory agencies. So now, so people don't realize how corrupt America is. They don't realize that uh, nothing gets done in Congress Almost nothing gets done in Congress without the grease of corruption. And that's why you still go bankrupt when you get sick. 90% of Americans have health have uh, healthcare debt. 50% of Americans can't afford a $400 emergency. Uh, nobody can afford. This is that's why there's homeless people everywhere. And we're sending hundreds of billions of dollars to Ukraine and military bases all over the world. This is called uh, people have no idea. People think cap that corruption in America is just like, oh, Joe Biden got his kid a job or they Donald all do that. Trump. No, they they that's, all do that. That's what people say. We're talking about we're talking about nothing gets done in Congress without corruption. Nothing. That's what I'm talking about completely corrupt the whole ukraine war thing is a money laundering operation just like the afghanistan war just like iraq libya syria this is all read the book uh hit confessions of an economic hitman that's the world we're living in right so your whole country's corrupt your government's 100 percent corrupt and that's why you nothing can get fixed that's why we have homeless people we have mentally ill people and um, they they could take a that $113 billion they sent to Ukraine and build mental health facilities and drug treatment programs, and that would clean up the streets. They won't do it. And by the way, that would be creating great jobs for people in America, right? You got to have people to, to you got to have therapists, you got to have nurses, you got to have uh, janitors that work there, you got to have people to build the buildings, you got to have electricians and carpentry. That'd be, it'd be a great jobs program and would be investing in America and we'd be cleaning up the streets. But that, there isn't an infrastructure of of corruption to do that. The corruption is the military industrial complex and fossil fuel companies that own our government. And that's why it's 100 percent corrupt. And that's why we blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. That's why we have a thousand military bases around. You think there's a thousand military bases around the world to keep you safe? It's there so we can exploit other people's countries and steal their natural resources. Well, I'm an oil baron, so I, that's safety to me. So anyway, oh, so. also nobody, dude, the Jeffrey Wygan, the cigarette whistleblower, they just tried to ruin, or uh, when Ralph Nader, the the seatbelt thing where they they just tried to ruin his life with a hooker, and yes. it, had to apologize. You don't get suicide unless you stumbled onto some intelligence That's community right. shit. So th there's no way they would kill the guy because I, I don't believe uh, straight up. I don't think that's a suicide. Where's his note? In his car, he's so depressed that he's about to go blow the lid off this thing. He kills himself. So that means, ju but just the by virtue of worrying about your safety, that is stepping on somebody's toes for a much more important thing than your life, which is whatever empire bullshit Boeing's in on around the world. I promise you, that's what it is. I I, I would make a bet on it. In fact, I would actually, too. I better stop talking like this. Okay, yeah. I about it. Uh, April 7th, stand-up comedy show at the Backyard Comedy Club in London, at the east side of London. So we're going to have a link for that uh, probably tomorrow morning up at our website. So if you're in London, you're in England, uh, and you want to come see a stand-up show, April 7th, it's a, it's a matinee, 3 p.m. show. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for those tickets. We'll have it up tomorrow. Come to Magoobies.
Oh. March uh, 20, 30th to 31st, uh, I'm at uh, Maryland at Magoobies. Go to KurtMasterComedy.com and, uh, you know, yeah, 29th to the 31st, I'll be at Magoobies. That's a great club. Please, dear God, come to Magoobies. Hey, come see us do a live stand-up show. We're going to be in Stockholm, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, London, Oslo, Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Cortland, New York, Oakmont, Pennsylvania, El Paso, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, Edmonton, Alberta, Vancouver, Jeez. British Columbia, and Denver, Colorado. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for those tickets. Mm-hmm.